to my channel. So I'm going to do my beauty bank update for the month of March. I've done pretty well this month. I haven't bought any makeup. It is the first month of the year that I have not bought any makeup. So that is good because I definitely splurged a little bit in January and then also last month. But yeah, this month don't have any new products to go through, but I will go through my beauty bank, um, any pans that I've hit this month, any makeup that I have finished. That is going slowly, but I have just introduced a project pan this month for the rest of the year. So I'm hoping to just get a little bit more motivated in terms of trying to finish certain items. There are certain items that are so, so close, but they're still not done. And I can't wait for them to be done. But I do have one empty today and yeah, a few pans. We'll also go through sort of like a monthly wrap up in terms of like what my favorites have been this month and anything else that I choose to discuss. But it's probably gonna be a shorter video just because I don't have all the new shiny bits of makeup to go through that I have the previous uh, months. So let's get into it, let's start. I'm gonna go through all of the eyeshadow pans that I've hit. I haven't hit any actual like makeup pans in terms of, you know, um, like blush or, or bronzer or anything like that. But there are a few eyeshadow pans that I have hit. One of them is a spoiler, but I'll still show it because, you know, there might be more of an update by the time I do do uh, my Pan That Palette update. So it is from my Pan That Palette, which is the Stone Vibes palette from Urban Decay. Um, the first one I spoke about in my last update, so it's not a spoiler, but I did hit pan in Good Karma right at the start of the month. I haven't been able to expand it. I'm, I'm not going to let you look at it too, too fast, but I hit pan in that in March. And I also just yesterday or the day before I hit pan and meditate right here. It's a very messy shade. It was a shade that was pretty dry but I cracked the surface and now it's like really, really messy and not dry, but I hit pan. So very excited to have uh, two more pans, obviously in my Pan Lab palette for the year. I'll go through obviously the full update when I do my Pan Lab palette update, which will be like in a week or two. Um, but yeah, that is exciting. And what I've done differently this year versus last year is every, eyeshadow pan that I hit is one point back into my beauty bank, not half a point. I want to be a little bit kinder to myself. So last month I ended the month on a negative 24. And uh, so yeah, I'm trying to uh, trying to make that look a little bit better. So those two pans obviously are going to help me massively. Briefly spoke about this in I think right at the beginning of my Shop My Stash. I don't think anyone really spotted it, but I did hit pan in the Chilling in Chicago from BH Cosmetics. I um, didn't have much to, to, to do on this. I barely went into this shade. It's a shade that I had in my Panos eyeshadows a couple years ago and I gave up. And then I used it once and I hit pan. And it's just been sitting, you know, untouched for a while now and I finally hit pan which was really exciting so it is the shade Magnificent right here. Um, so yeah I have another pan in this palette which is really exciting. This is a palette that is part of my year-long eyeshadow project pan which I have yet to do an update on. I did my intro and uh, the update will be coming shortly. I'm just waiting for like some more progress because I don't want to have like a two minute video on that because yeah it's been a lot trickier trickier to really kind of manage versus what I was hoping to like the results in terms of the results they're 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 not as good as I was hoping so anyway short story I have another pan so that's three new pans this month all right and then the one makeup item that I did end up finishing is this essence uh lash princess this is the waterproof one this became uh super dry but also it's basically dried out I, I've had it open for I, I want to say like a good I think it's pushing six months now I've had it open for a long time and I was using it quite a lot at the beginning of the year and also back in February but this last month I did start using my MAC one, which I really do like. And just comparing the two, I've just let this dry out. And also 
before that happened, it just ended up going down on my cheeks all the time. Like after wearing it for an hour, even though it's waterproof, after wearing it for an hour, it would end up on my face somewhere. So this is a repurchase of mine. I don't think I'm gonna buy another Essence, unless, you know, it's a different type. But normally their mascara is pretty good. I don't know what's happened with this one where it's just been a, an absolute mess for me. So that one, I have finished. I do have some other items that I am decluttering, but I don't count them towards my beauty bank, but I just thought I would share them with you. So these two are products that I did speak about in a video that I did this month of all the products in my collection that I hate, but I, I still keep, right? So I actually had these two in that video. They're from Models Own. They are liquid lipsticks and they've just expired. I mean, I kind of hate them because they've expired. So I'm just going to say goodbye to them. There's no point holding on to them any longer. So they are leaving my collection. Another product that I've decided just today to kind of get rid of, even though I've barely, barely gone into this, but I did use it today and I just hated it. And it is this, this is the Rimmel London BB Cream. I knew I hated it from the moment that I tried it last year. And I was like, no, why? <laughs> it's not like it's an expensive item at all, but it's just annoying, it's wasteful. And I, I, I put it on my skin today. I had to mix it with my concealer to brighten it because it is very, very yellow. And I just hate it. I, I really hate it. I don't like the consistency. I mean, actually the consistency is okay. It's the shade. The shade is a problem. The consistency is actually quite serum-y. I quite like actually the consistency. So that is a lie, but it is the color. It's just far too yellow. And this is the light shade. So I don't know what I need, like ultra light, but I also need a neutral shade. Like, yeah. This is light, but it, it leans towards yellow, and I don't want a, a light beige yellow on my face. It just doesn't work out for me. I'm a bit paler than that, especially in the winter, and I did try this when I still had a little bit of a tan last year, and it still didn't work, so I'm gonna say goodbye to this. There's no point in me holding on to it. All right, so that is it. Obviously, I'm only counting my mascara as an empty and then the three eyeshadow pans. Didn't bring any makeup in, so I was at negative 24. I'm now at a negative 20, because obviously that's four points back into my bank. So, you know, I'm getting, I, I'm, I'm making a tiny little dent, but I'm still like not negative 20. And obviously if I buy more makeup this next month, then that's just going to, ruin it even more, but hopefully the next month I'll actually get some products finished because like I said, I just start Project Pan and I'm already seeing a lot of progress on certain items. So I actually do think I will have one or two items done for the next update, like within the next like three weeks or so. So fingers crossed, I can have some more products finished. And so then if I do buy some stuff, Maybe they'll just balance each other out. I also would like to see more pans. Three pans this month was actually quite low. I have been leaning more towards like four or five pans a month on average, just looking back. So three has been pretty slow. I don't know what's happened. I mean, I am dipping into a lot of eyeshadows and my project level up is really kicking my butt because I thought that I would have at least one pan from it. I'm working on the Artemis from Alter Ego and I'm very, very close to hitting pans but I still have yet to hit pan, especially in the cream shade, which if you saw my update, you saw I was, there was like a huge crater in that shade, but I have yet to hit the pan and I've gone back in a few times. So yeah, I thought that I would have a pan. There's also, actually, I think I will also have a pan in the, uh, the Nouveau palette from ABH because I have been dipping in to Paloma a lot and I don't know if you could you, you'll be able to notice that but there is quite a significant dip in there and I again I thought I might have a pan like a cheeky surprise pan to show you because obviously I'm not really working on this it is in my year-long eyeshadow project pan but it's not something that I'm actively like talking about that I need to hit pan on it but alas I did not hit pan <laughs> so yeah I'm I'm really uh I'm really trying but it's not happening it's not happening so something's going on all right let's go into the 
items that I have enjoyed the most this month, like my favorite items. I don't do a favorites video, but I have started this year just to talk about certain products, if there are any that I have really enjoyed in this last month. So there are three makeup items that I wanted to talk about and then one sort of device. I did do a video on it, so I'll be really, really quick because obviously you can go watch the video and if you're not interested, you're not interested, that's absolutely fine. But I just wanna say again, I've actually really enjoyed this product and I spent a lot of time in February and also this month using it. And I didn't, I wasn't at the point to talk about it back in February because I was still testing it out. I did like a 30 day, I actually did like 40 day <laughs> test run, but I'm still using it. And it's basically just an at home laser hair removal device. It's, it, it, it's super easy to use. I have a video of me testing it out and talking about my opinion on it. So if you are interested, let it, you know, just go watch that. But this is the you like um, brand, but there are so many out there. So I'm sure you will find various of them. But anyway, I've been really enjoying that product. So I wanted to talk about it because it, has, it is like a favorite of mine, like a new favorite of, you know, something that I do not every single day, but I do it like three or four times a week. I've actually slowed down now because I don't need to use it as much. So I have actually just been doing two times a week. So maybe eventually I won't even have to do it that much, which will be ideal. But anyway, I just wanted to say I've been really enjoying that and I've been also using it under my arms and also Bikini Line, I've been, I've been slowly seeing the progress on that too. So, you know, I definitely think it is a product that works. I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't work because I bought it through a Facebook ad and those are the worst. Like, I, I honestly thought when I purchased it, I was just gonna, like, I'm just throwing away my money, but it was one of those things, well, fine, you know, I just, you know, I took a chance and I'm so glad I did. So yeah, I wanted to talk about that. Anyway, moving on to the makeup items I've been really enjoying this month. Charlotte Tilbury, it, I, I love this item. This is the cream bronzer. So it does look a little bit disgusting mine. But anyway, this one it looks like, I had patterned it last year. It would be an item that I potentially could roll into my project pan, but right now I have it in my shop, my stash. I'm just really enjoying it. And yeah, every time I use it, I'm just reminded of the fact that I really love the color. Like I really love the tone of this. And I think if, cause I have the ABH cream bronzer as well. And honestly, I really like that too, but that's more warm tone than this. This is like a true cool tone neutral. I would say it definitely leans more cool tone, but it also is kind of just neutral, which is what I tend to enjoy. And if the ABH bronzer was more this shade and this tone, you know, they would be on par with each other. But I actually do think I like this one a little bit better because of the color. And I've been really enjoying it this month. Um, so wanted to shout that out. And then, you know, I already spoke about it, but the Artemis Ultra Ego, it is in my project level up. And actually I've been having a lot of fun with this, not the whole palette, because there definitely are shades in here that I have yet to touch, but I've been really enjoying these greens over here. They've been so much fun to use and so easy to use too. If I just wanna use two shades, I just go in and then I put this in my inner corner, so maybe three shades, right? And it's just been a pleasure to use this in the last uh, month. This is the shade that I thought I would have a pan in because I have such a crater, but there's still no pan in that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been really enjoying this palette it's not like my favorite palette it's not perfect there are a lot of redundant shades in here but I do enjoy it like I even used the shade yesterday and it was a delight and really beautiful so I'm I'm just working my way through it and figuring out which shades I actually like and I've never done a I don't think I did a no pan left behind with this. I honestly don't, but if I did, I I think the good thing about Project Level Up is it makes you go back into the shade. So yeah, I went into this shade once, but I have two more uses because it's my level three. And after three uses of using the shade of every single shade in the palette and hitting three pans in a palette, you're gonna realize which shades you love and which shades you don't and how you really feel about the palette. And I think that's why the project is so great, but also it's just made me really love this palette, but not like love, love, but just appreciate 
the shades that I do like and made me figure out how to use this palette as well because the cream to powder shades are not my favorite. I, they do obviously try to do it because they're trying to dupe Natasha Denona. I personally don't think they really work that well. But having said that, I mean, all of these greens are all cream shades and I've been going into them a lot and really, really enjoying it. This is another cream shade. Where, where is it here? <laughs> And I've been really enjoying that one too. So I say that, but then yet I, I'm going in there and I am enjoying them. It's just, I think they're just a little bit finicky because I have to use my fingers for them. I don't find that they pick up well with a brush. And then another palette that I've been loving this, well, it's only really been the last two weeks, but in this month, um, because there really wasn't anything else that I wanted to shout out, but I really have been enjoying the Killer Purr from Menagerie. I actually have it on my lids today. Um, this like yellowy gold is this beautiful lioness shade. I don't know, today I was like, I want some yellow on my lids, but like, like I want some like beautiful vibrancy. And yeah, I've been really enjoying this palette. Haven't gone into it as much as I wanted, but I did go into this shade yesterday as well. And then um, what else did I do? I think I went into this one a few, like a week ago, whatever. And then the mattes in here are really beautiful. I, like I started with this shade today and then I think I went into this shade a lot a couple weeks ago too when I was working with another palette. So, you know, I've been enjoying this not as a palette to use for just one look, but more as a companion palette at the moment, just because I pulled it from my shop, my stash, and the way that I have all of my palettes and my projects, it's harder for me to just use this specifically just for one look when I feel like I have to use everything else. So, but it's been really nice to go into the shimmers. And like I said, this has been, this is beautiful. Like it's a beautiful shimmer. And I just, I just felt like that yellow, like that pop of yellow today. I've been wearing my makeup since this morning. So it's probably looking a little bit rough. You know, it's not looking as pretty as it was potentially. And I did little faux freckles, but I've been really enjoying this palette. So when I actually have gone into it, and that's why I pulled it from my shop, my stash, because I really just wanted to use it. And it's, you know, there, there are certain palettes in my collection where I just know I love them, but I don't give them as much use and love as I should. And that's definitely one of them because it's never been pulled for a project, which is such a shame. So I don't know, I could do a No Pan Left Behind style project of my own. But I have the project level up. I've had pandas eyeshadows. I'm now doing year long project pan for my eyeshadows. It's just, it's a little bit much. It's a little bit much. Plus I try to pull for my shot, my snatch, which is why I have it out now. Okay, so this part of the video is more about media, like what's, what movies am I watching? What TV shows are we watching? What music have I been listening to this last month? I'm just, I'm not gonna go through everything. So I actually have uh, watched quite a lot of movies this month. So I'm just gonna go uh, maybe like just a few of them, just if I have something to talk about. Um, but let's start with the music actually, because there's not really much to say about the music. So in terms of like the top artists that I've listened to this month, Lifehouse is one of them, which I've been listening to since I was a teenager. Birdie is another one, which again, I really have enjoyed her music for I want to say like 10 years now. So I always like go back to her eventually and listen to her music. She did have a new album that came out a couple of years ago. Not a huge fan of it, but I really do like uh, the older music. Uh, Noah Kahan, still enjoying him. I did mention him, I think it was last month, but still been listening to him. And I also been listening to Sam Smith uh, this month as well. And then my top tracks. So the first one is Skinny Love by Birdie which makes sense, and also Keeping Your Head Up by Birdie. So the, the top two tracks I've been listening to the most have been from Birdie, and then Between the Raindrops uh, from Lifehouse and Natasha Benningfield. I didn't even know about that song. I don't know why I've listened to it so much. But anyway, though, that's the music I've been listening to. All right, so let's go into the movies because there are some movies that I wanna talk about. So let's talk about, I'm not gonna talk about everything, like I said, because I have, watched I think 10 movies this month, which is, no, nine movies. I've watched nine movies, which is quite a lot. So we, the last one that we watched was just um, a couple days ago, which was Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal. Now this obviously is somewhat of a remake from the Patrick Swayze one, which I've never seen. And um, 
you know, it's like it was like an uh, like an eighties movie, and and uh, the, for them to do a remake of it for modern day, obviously they went they they set it in Florida instead in the Keys, and I thought it was so silly, but also I did find it entertaining, and also I quite like Jake Gyllenhaal, so I took it for what it is. I gave it a three star. It's not it's not amazing, but it, if you want like an action movie where you don't need to think, and it's you can like suspend your like disbelief when you're watching it because honestly it is so unrealistic then yeah you could watch it but it's it's you know I'm not I'm probably not going to watch it again so one that I thought was really really good was Napoleon so this is with Wacken Phoenix and he was so good so good at Napoleon I I honestly thought this was going to be a bore I I didn't really have any plans to watch this movie if I'm going to be honest it's two and a half hours long or something like that and I just thought oh, do I really want to watch this but Wacken Phoenix is such a good actor so really uh, you know even if you don't like the movies that he's in you have to respect the fact that he just owns his craft I do think he is he embodies whatever character he chooses to do and become uh, but obviously not all of his movies are great I do think this movie though it was very very good and really entertaining a lot a lot more entertaining than I thought it was going to be and quirky too it honestly the way that he did the character was very quirky and uh yeah I, I just I enjoyed it I enjoyed it I didn't I didn't think I would but I just thought it was actually really well done so I would recommend that I did I did I gave that five star I would definitely recommend that oh another one that I really really loved was All of Us Strangers so this one oh, what's the name of them so this one is with Andrew Scott and also Paul Mescal Jamie Bell and Claire Foy so a really amazing cast Andrew Scott I know him from Fleabag and ever since then I have like wanted to see more of his work and been more interested in what he does because I really really enjoyed him in Fleabag which you have if you haven't seen that show it's it's just like it's a a wonderful quirky sad um really good show it, it's a really good show a uh, very intelligent show but anyway I ever since that I saw him in that I've been wanting to see him in more things and I was really skeptical about watching this because I thought it was going to be quite slow I thought it was going to be quite sad and dreary I mean I just I don't I, I, I had to I felt like I had to be in the right mood to watch this show so I put it on the other night I watched it all night on my own I was like I don't know what I'm getting myself into um but it actually was really beautiful and it was definitely different to what I expected. There are a lot of like fantastical elements in this movie and metaphors and it, it really goes into grief and it is sad. Like there are like, it does actually like grab your heart and it's gut wrenching. Um, but I thought that the way that they acted him and Paul Mescal, uh, I, I think Andrew Scott actually his acting was like just amazing in this I really do like him as an actor and I, I really liked how they handled the movie like I really thought this was a beautiful movie and a really sad story like the whole thing with him and his parents Honestly, I was in tears. I was crying along with him. And that that was what was gut wrenching for me, like when they're in the diner. If you've seen this, you've seen it. But like that to me, that got me. Um, I wasn't I wasn't wholly surprised about the ending because I kind of suspected it without even like knowing what happens in this. I was starting to think certain things. And so that wasn't a huge shock, but it also like sad, sad. So um, yeah, I would recommend it. I gave it a four star because I don't think it's something that I'm gonna run back and watch because it because of the subject matter. I just think, you know, you have to be in the right mood to watch a sad movie and one that's about grief. And and I don't know, I, I, I would, I don't know. It, it's, it, I, that's why I can't really give it five stars, even though I think 
the movie, and like I'm still thinking about it like days later, I do think it was really well done. I watched Damsel. Damsel? I watched Damsel and I liked it. And so many people are panning this movie. I, I kind of felt bad, so I went back on my uh, Letterboxd account and I gave it a three star, but initially gave it a four star. But then I watched all these videos and people's opinions and I got swayed. But I honestly, when I watched this, I thought it was, I thought it was entertaining. Not the best movie in the world, but for what it is, I just thought, oh, I'll give it four star, why not? But um, I don't know, everyone hated this movie. I, mean, I kind of, I found it, I found, I, I, if I were like, um, the thing is, if I had been a 14 year old watching that movie, I think I would have really enjoyed it. But you know, obviously watching it now, I can see like the acting isn't that great. And the plot is, is obviously not original. Um, but so what? Like, I, I don't know, I just, I found it quite entertaining. So maybe I was just in a mood to watch something silly like that. And I liked it. So anyway, there is one more. I watched Fingernails. Has anyone seen Fingernails? Maybe this is the month where I watched sort of weirder movies, but Fingernails, it, it was, it was um, not something, I didn't expect it, but you know what I will say, what's her name, Jessie Buckley, she always does these quirky, strange movies, and I, she's another one that's like on my radar, like if I see that she's in the movie, then I know what type of movie it is, it's just that, that's just the way it goes, but I thought Riz Ahmed, he's in that too, and Luke Wilson, and Jeremy Allen White, loads of people love Jeremy Allen White, I don't really care for him, but um, Riz, I thought Riz Ahmed was really good in this movie, I, I tell you what, I, yeah, it was, I thought it was a good movie. I gave it um, three and a half. I didn't think it was like amazing uh, because it was kind of weird. It's it's basically this sort of uh, parallel world. I, I wanna say parallel world because it's obviously not happening in our world, but it's not dystopian either. But you know, it, this company or the, you know, this agency um, can basically test couples and see if they are basically your soulmate. So then people say, oh, have you done the test? Have you done the test? And that's sort of how the movie starts. And um, and it's about this couple and they have done the test and they are they are matched. They, they, they are a match and they've been to, they've been married for, I don't know, four or five years or whatever, uh, but she's lonely and she doesn't feel fulfilled, you know? And so she kind of, she starts working for that agency and then she starts seeing how the tests go and, and I'm not going to like give away why it's called fingernails, but I was not expecting that. So if you've seen this movie, then, <laughs> then you know, but I was like, oh my God. Anyway, anyway, so those are the movies I've watched. I did watch a few other ones, but nothing to really uh, talk about. Okay, and then last but not least, in terms of TV shows, anything that I feel like talking about, the only thing I wanted to mention that I binged in one night, I think it was one night, is Buying Beverly Hills, which is, and I watched the second season, because I've already seen the, the first season, and that is uh, with, um, what is her name? Kyle Richards' husband. Um, oh my god, Mo something, Uz, Uman, Umansky, the Umansky, yeah, Mo Umansky, he has the agency in Beverly Hills, one of those shows where they basically sell houses to really, really, really rich people, find buyers and blah, 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 but I, I binge that, I don't know what, what it is about those reality TV shows, but I completely binged it, as soon as I saw it on Netflix, I was like, oh, yep, I'm watching season two, and it went like that. And now I want to know what's happening with their relationship. It doesn't matter for my life, who cares? But I want to know, so whatever. Anyway, that is kind of everything that's been going on in my life. Obviously not everything, but that is my monthly recap. I thought March went by really fast. Actually for a long month, I thought it went by really fast. I am filming this a little ahead of time, but it is uh, Easter Friday today. So I'm actually gonna be posting it today. So I hope everyone has a really good Easter. If you do have some time off, Enjoy it with yourself, your friends, your family, whoever. Just take the rest that you need if possible. And yeah, I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.